Hi, I'm Dre, the host and founder of the Draco Network. This is my first video for 2021, so I want to wish everyone a happy new year. For today's topic, I thought we would take a look at some of the common terminology that pops up around us with regard to cloud computing. So the first few times I heard about cloud computing, I was really confused as to what actually was meant by it. Not necessarily the concept, but the logistics. And then I started to hear all these other terms that just sort of got a little bit more confusing. So I thought I'd unpack some of those terms for us today so that we can make a little bit more sense of it since cloud computing is certainly something that is not gonna go away and we're just gonna see more and more of it in healthcare in the future. So let's kick things off with a definition of cloud computing itself. So the definition from the Oxford Dictionary states that cloud computing is the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store manage and process data rather than on a local server or a personal computer. Cloud computing has been around for about 20 years in a literal sense, but the concept behind sharing infrastructure or sharing services goes back all the way to the 60s when we first had the internet. And that's when we had huge mainframe computers that were incredibly complex and costly to build. And so you would see uh, bureaus that would actually rent out space on their mainframes the same sort of concept is around for cloud computing. So with cloud computing, you have these providers that will build huge capacity data centers and they will rent out space within those data centers or rent off infrastructure so that you can utilize it. So they're typically on a subscription based model. So you can easily scale horizontally and vertically if you require more infrastructure services for your business or for your personal use. So there are three main cloud computing types, and then there's also a subtype that I'll mention that is gaining a little more traction in the healthcare space or in niche type areas. So the first type of cloud that can be offered is a public cloud. So a public cloud offers hardware, software, and supporting infrastructure as a service, and those services are delivered over the general internet. There is, of course, privacy and security that can be layered onto that, you can have specific sites that require dual authentication and different security enhancements, but in general, the data is flowing back and forth over the web. There's three or four very large players in this market, and those are Microsoft Azure, um, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Services, and IBM. You do have some smaller players, but in general, when people are thinking about public cloud computing, those are the big players. One of the terms that often comes up when we're looking at contracts in the healthcare environment is the concept of multi-tenancy. So tenancy is the interaction or use of a piece of infrastructure. So multi-tenancy literally means that there's more than one individual or group or entity that's accessing the server at the same time. So two people are on it at the same time who may not and are usually not part of the same organization. So in a public cloud, you've just got shared space everywhere and people are accessing things as they need them. And in a healthcare environment, because of our privacy and security laws, some of the things that we wanna look at is what the rules are around multi-tenancy. So when that can occur, what the parameters are to, to have that in place if it is in place, or restrictions around multi-tenancy in general. So the second type of cloud is a private cloud. So a private cloud, very similar from an infrastructure perspective to a public cloud. So it also involves IT infrastructure and actually utilizing or paying for the service of access to that infrastructure. However, the difference between a public cloud and a private cloud is a private cloud is set up specifically and solely for a single organization or single entity's use. So if you look at having a remote hosted data center, for example, that data center or the container around the data center would be reserved and would be on network. So it wouldn't be something that could be easily accessed by just going to any web browser on any internet connection. You'd need to be on your actual network connection for the organization to be able to reach those services. So if you think of public, again, that's over the general web. I could be on a Starbucks connection and still hit a public cloud, I can't be on that same connection and hit my network private cloud, I would need to VPN to something like that. Private clouds are more common as compared to their public counterparts, especially when we're looking at remote hosting of things like EHRs. So this third type of cloud services that are offered are hybrids. And this is where you're actually contracting out to a third party service provider to have your IT infrastructure services through a combination of both public and private. 
And you're probably wondering why wouldn't we want everything on network and why would we want to have some public? So these arrangements are typically in place for organizations who have a lot of computing services available to not only their providers and clinicians, but also to the general public. So they may have external facing websites, they may have applications that patients and caregivers are actually accessing, such as portals, HIEs, and things like that. So there's a hybrid type requirement that's needed in a lot of those instances. So the EHR, again, may be contained within a private cloud, so it's on network, you need to be you know, connected directly to the network of the organization in order to access it. But the public facing pieces can still be presented and they can work cohesively together under a single contract. So the fourth subset that I wanted to mention, and this one is gaining a little bit more traction as we go forward, is something called a community cloud. So if you look at hybrid type clouds, you do have a public component as well as the private component. A community cloud is kind of a subset of a hybrid. And what it actually is doing is it's still taking that private section where you still have the you know, networked containered uh, infrastructure service offering there or software service offering. And then you have a community or a, a group of like-minded you know, collaborative entities that are going to share infrastructure for the public space. So instead of being general public and open to everyone, you're actually going to be in a data center that is catering to a specific um, audience or entity or collective group of people. So there's, there's two main pieces to this, so they can actually be industry specific. So there are data centers that have been set up, remote hosted data centers, that target uh, healthcare organizations specifically. And that is so they can be sure to stay on top of all of the requirements for legislation regarding privacy and security. So they are HIPAA compliant, they make sure they are certified by high tech, and they do all that type of stuff. And then the other one that you'll see is geographic. So if you look at Canada, for example, there are a lot of pieces of legislation that dictate when, how, and under what circumstances data can cross our borders. So cloud service providers actually have created distinct offerings where all of the infrastructure is physically housed within the borders of the country. So if you look at a general cloud offering, those clouds can be anywhere and data is actually bouncing between the data centers so that you can have high availability and so that you can meet your disaster recovery targets with a community cloud that's still happening, but it's for this example, Canada's physical borders and all of the individuals who are um, obtaining services from that service provider happen to be Canadian entities. So that's what a community cloud is. You're seeing a lot more of that going forward, especially as more legislation and more rules come into place for privacy and security. And healthcare is certainly one of those that's leveraging community clouds uh, going forward. So the second big piece of cloud computing that I wanted to just touch on super briefly is some terms around the service offerings. So there are three main service offerings that you can get when you're moving an organization to the cloud or when you're first uh, going live on applications that are quote unquote cloud hosted. And those are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So infrastructure as a service is actually just outsourcing a component of your infrastructure. It could be all of your infrastructure and the entire data center or it could be a portion of it. So you can offload, for example, some of your long-term storage under an IAAS or Infrastructure as a Service contract. Platform as a Service is actually one step further. So Platform as a Service does, of course, involve the infrastructure, but Platform as a Service also includes the components of the operating system. So Platform as a Service is used a lot in our environment for open source custom developments. So one of the uh, examples that's used very frequently is Red Hat. So Red Hat OpenShift is a platform as a service. So you can set it up and configure it and have it be meaningful to your organization and define those parameters and everything. But the actual operating system and the framework and the general nature of um, Red Hat is, is already provided for you from the server provider by your contract. So that's a platform as a service. And the final one 
is called a software as a service. So software as a service is where you're actually going to purchase services that provide an entire complete and comprehensive software package to you. So all aspects of the environment, including the maintenance and support is actually something that's under contract with the service provider. So a really good example of this for healthcare would be the Salesforce healthcare CRM offering. So that is a software as a service where you actually will contract out. Not all applications in the healthcare environment have these software as a service packages available for uh, cloud hosted offerings. However, we are starting to see more and more of them come forward, especially when we're looking at add on or specialty type things, things like Teladoc for telemedicine or perhaps some of our patient accessed APIs. So those are the big three terms that are going to define what type of service offering you're looking for and are actually going to drive a lot of the terms in your contracting if you're looking at contracting as a healthcare organization or if you come across some contract information or support documentation uh, in the course of your regular day. I hope that this super, super brief overview of some of the terms that we come across in cloud computing is helpful. I definitely have a lot more to learn in the cloud computing space, but as I learn things, I will go ahead and share those with you. Um, let me know if you found this helpful or if there's more information that you want me to dive into. I can look into it a little bit further and share what I find with you. As always, if you like the types of videos that I've been posting and you haven't already done so, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified next time I post one. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.